Do you feel like you're too poor to be really happy? Or if you lost your current financial status, you would become discontent? Would you be discontent if you didn't get the next pay raise or if you lost your job? Do you feel like you don't have enough friends or that your family isn't how you want it to be? Stay tuned to find out what the solution is to how you can be content in these things. Hi, I'm Elisa. And I'm Jen, and we're from Captivated by Him, and today we're going to be talking about how we can have lasting and eternal contentment. <laughs> yes, this exists. Your contentment doesn't have to be dependent on the things, whether you're making a certain amount of money, whether your friends like you, or whether you even have friends, or whether your family is perfect. Riches, family, and friends. These are just a few things that many people in the world find really important and try to find their contentment in. And if these things were taken away from them, then they would become discontent. But did you know there's a contentment that you can have for eternity? If you're a Christian, then God has promised that he will give you eternal riches and eternal friends and family. When you remember this truth, you can have contentment that isn't based on how you feel from one moment to the next due to your circumstances. And instead, knowing and remembering the eternal blessings that you have in Christ. Uh, and that can help you to have lasting contentment. No one can take these things away from you. Curious as to what those blessings are? Well, let's dive straight into them. Remember in our last video, we talked about how God has promised us eternal spiritual blessings in Christ. And we can read about them again in Ephesians 1, 3, which says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ if we're Christians. When Christ saved us, he not only plucked us out of a, a course headed straight for hell, but God also promises us grace upon grace by promising us every spiritual blessing. Dude, that's so comforting to know that we have every spiritual blessing in Christ. Furthermore, in verse 11 of Ephesians 1, it says, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. God's will, his desire and plan is to give us eternal inheritance and blessing. And this is an inheritance that as 1 Peter 1.4 says is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Whoa, that's super amazing. And let's start by talking about one of those blessings, eternal riches. Do you know that God promises riches that don't fade away when we die? Yes, that's something that all the richest people in all of history have in common. They were incredibly rich, but when they died, all the riches were gone. For example, one of the richest men who ever lived was Mansa Musa, a Mali emperor in the 14th century. A BBC article about Mansa Musa literally described his wealth as wealth indescribable. <laughs> Whoa, another super rich historical figure was Genghis Khan. This Mongol emperor's lands measured up to around the size of the continent of Africa at its height. And yet still, Mansa Musa and Genghis Khan, their wealth wouldn't compare to the wealth that we Christians have in Christ. You see, as Christians, we have been saved to be daughters of God. And Romans 8, 16 to 17 tells us that as God's children, that makes us heirs with Christ. Let's read it. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Wow, that verse is really epic. Because if Christ inherits the new heaven and new earth as the Son of God, that means as children of God, we too will inherit the new heaven and the new earth along with Christ after this current earth is destroyed at God's future judgment. I mean, Genghis Khan only inherited the size of Africa. We inherit the new heaven and new earth along with Christ. We only deserve hell, but have been saved only by God's grace in Christ. 
Knowing this should lead us to lasting contentment and eternal rejoicing. Okay, eternal riches alone is already a really good reason to be content. But here's another blessing we have eternally. The blessing of friends and family for eternity. People on earth very much care about family and friends, but these things are not certain either. We can count on family and friends for some things, but the truth is that they won't bring us lasting contentment. They can sometimes make mistakes and not have time when we need them or even hurt us sometimes. Or death and sickness can affect our relationships as well. But God has promised eternal friends and family in Christ. Yes, another amazing eternal spiritual blessing we have as Christians is being a part of the family of God. Christ defines his family in Luke 8, 19 to 21, which says this, and his mother and brothers came to him, and they were unable to get to him because of the crowd. And it was reported to him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wishing to see you. But he, Jesus, answered and said to them, my mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Do you define your family like Christ does? Blood runs thicker than water, as they say, but spiritual water runs thicker than blood. Ooh, that's a super good point, Elisa, about our spiritual family. And Christ also defines his friends in John 15, 13 to 14, which says, Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You're my friends if you do what I command you. Do you define your friends as Christ does, that your closest friends are those who do God's commands? If you feel as if you have no friends, do you realize that the objective truth outside of your feelings, if you're a Christian, is that you do have friends in Christ? And are you also that kind of friend who makes sacrifices when it comes to people's deepest need, their spiritual need for Christ? Thanks, Jen, for sharing that definition. Let's put it all together now, okay? This means that God's family and friends are those who hear God's word and do it. He has purified them through Christ. He has sacrificed more than any sacrifice your family or your friends have ever made for you. I'm not saying, of course, to not love your earthly friends and family. Do love them because Christ also commands us to love your neighbor as yourself. But I am encouraging you to examine whether you see the true worth of your spiritual family. These are God's beloved whom he has given you to encourage you, to sharpen you, and be light to the world alongside with you. Do you see the true value of God's family? Though they are not perfect, of course, in this lifetime. And do you serve them and pour into them because you understand their true value? Be truly beautiful in imitating Christ and his character by aligning your affections to his in loving his family and discovering the beauty of the fellowship that we can have as part of his family. So there we have it. Two amazing eternal blessings that we can keep our eyes on as pilgrims traveling through a world that is not our home. Our destination is heaven and we can be comforted knowing that God promises us, one, we will be co-heirs with Christ and two, we have his family around us together to fight this spiritual battle and to obey him. Exactly. We hope these truths are so comforting to you as they are to us. We encourage you to think often about these things and cultivate a constant memory of God's promises so that you can learn to be content no matter what. If this was encouraging to you, please like this video and subscribe to our channel to continue to learn more with us about how you can have contentment that lasts. That's all we have for today, friends, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive into God's eternal treasure that he has stored up for us. But until next time, stay, stay captivated. captivated. <laughs> money, 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 money.